get my six. What's up, everybody? Uh, good morning for me as of the recording of this video. It's still early, um, but I'm challenging myself. I'm going to get into that here briefly in a minute to do a little more than I've been doing, especially since so many of you have been sending in your stories, your true stories of the paranormal slash supernatural slash spiritual uh, cryptozoological, all of them. Today, we've got some wonderful stories for you from real viewers like you, maybe you, if you're listening to the story you sent. Uh, we've got a haunted castle from Scotland filled with ghosts. We do have a Bigfoot Sasquatch story from Tennessee. And we've got a story of an alien abduction, multiple alien abductions, okay? Um, but first, I want to give a shout out to apparent, apparently one of my biggest fans, uh, Boots. Have a look. Isn't that amazing? That's Boots uh, from the family Dutton. Uh, sent some, some kind emails. Let me know. Boots always watches the show uh, with them when they watch. Uh, I appreciate that. And along those lines, you'll probably notice that the comment section is open again already. Someone else who wants to remain anonymous and who is doing this completely without pay. I never thought of this. Uh, they are being my... I've added them as a... Uh, as a uh, what do you call it a, a, like an administrator to the channel they're going through and policing comments for me now um told them a few things to look for uh they kind of get it they've been here for a long time um so listen here's the deal we have a zero tolerance policy for vertically challenged individuals who live under bridges on this channel that stands for i guess trolls that's a politically correct way to say things um these stories are coming from real people. These are real stories. I do not doubt their experiences. They will not be ridiculed, okay? Some folks have already been driven away from vertically challenged individuals coming on here saying, you know, you're stupid if you believe that. That never happened. You need to see a, see a therapist. You're crazier than the crazy late guy that hosts this channel that doesn't even have anything to do with homesteading. Why is it called that anyway? Uh-uh. You're gone. We've got a second set of eyes, which is going to be a full-time set of eyes on the channel now. Get on out of here. We will take the boots of the world every day and any day over you. Go watch Mari Povich, okay? And nothing against folks who watch Mari Povich. Uh, and I think some folks took that the wrong way. Listen, we don't want closed-minded people here. We want open-minded people. If you're so set in your views that you're unwilling to consider other ways that things may or may not be going on in the world around us, Go somewhere else. We don't want you, okay? Or at least keep it to yourself. Now, before I get into the stories, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I saw this the other day and I shared this on the community uh, part of the channel here. Uh, my buddy Travis over at Fighting Past 40 made a video uh, where he challenges us to do four things or take a look at four areas of our life. I want to read this again, even though I shared that video the other day and a lot of you folks have gone to see it. This is huge, and this is part of the reason I'm out here at times now doing two videos a day, um, because he's 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 brought me to look at myself and the way I'm spending my time, my resources, to kind of re-challenge myself to amp things up to the next level. So, and I did it. I put pen to paper on the back of this really awesome bookmark that you get if you purchase any of my books available in our Etsy store, the link of which is in the description box below, right below the video where it says more dot dot dot. Uh, you got to get October Nights Part 1 and read it because Part 2 is going to be out within 30 days. I'm, I finally put a timeline on it. We're less than a month away. Um, so you get this bookmark. Um, but here's what Travis says. He says, take a look at your life over the last three to five years and ask yourself these questions about four areas of your life. Uh, well, and are you trending up or are you trending down? Number one, physical health. Exercise, diet, rest. This all comes into play. How have you been living over the last three to five years? You know, with the pandemic shutting, or shutting down a lot of things, shutting down gyms, um, a lot of folks let their exercise and their fitness and their health kind of go on the back burner and they, they slid away. I, I know people personally that I've seen and it's like, wow, you really put on some pounds. 
But other people have made different choices out of, let's face it, boredom of not having a lot to do that they otherwise had been doing before the, the pandemic. They started getting in shape. I know a guy, I used him as an example a couple of years ago, lived down the road from me, had to start working from home because of the pandemic. He'd go out in the middle of the day and start taking long walks. It was fall, it was winter, and then when it, it got hot, he'd go out in the mornings or the evenings. Dude has literally lost the equivalency of, an, of, a, of a human. I mean, he was probably, he was probably 300 pounds. Uh, he's, he's down to like 210 now. He's probably six feet tall, so he's kind of a big guy anyway. And he hasn't started jogging or running. This is just from walking. I talked to him once. I, I picked him up. You might remember this story. He was having cramps. I was out for my run, and I saw that he was struggling. So I went back and got him in the truck. At that point, he was to where he was walking up to 16 miles a day. The man has changed his life. And by the way, he's probably about 60 years old. He's no spring chicken. Let's so take a look at that. Number two, resource management. This would involve your time, your money, your energy, and, 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 and your material possessions, okay? How are we spending our time? You know, I, I made a video the other day that not enough people watched because when I make these meaningful uh, videos filled with meat and potatoes about real life, a lot of folks don't watch those. They like the stuff where they're trying to figure out what's running around the back of the woods back here. And I get that. That stuff's interesting. But in that video, I talked about, you know, how are you spending the first hour of your day? Are you, are you pissing it away watching some legacy media channel make you angry and, and, and rile you up and make you dislike entire demographics of people for nothing they've ever done to you? People you'll never meet? Wouldn't that time be better spent maybe having your coffee in peace, listening to your own thoughts, prayer, meditation, quiet time, and then, hey, why not follow it up with some exercise, okay? Uh, how are you spending your money? Are you spending it on things you don't need? Do you find that you're always short coming up for the bills, but every time you stop to get gas, you go in and piss away 4 to $6 on potato chips and soda pop, which is really not helping your, you know, number one health aspects of life? And then material possessions, part of that too. Do you really need all those things? And if you do, do you have to have the most advanced, highest priced item of those things, you know? Uh, number three, relationships. This is a big one with me. Uh, it, it, you you want to look at both sides of the coin. How are your relationships with the people in your life who matter? Your spouse, your significant other, your children. Uh, if you have healthy relationships with parents and siblings, how are those relationships going? And then on the inverse side, are you spending time with people who are toxic that maybe you shouldn't be? Is there somebody you should be distancing yourself from because every time they get around, you leave feeling worse than you did before they showed up? Think about it, folks. Uh, you don't have to have a relationship with anybody, be it a next-door neighbor who's negative or be it a family member who's toxic. If they bring you down, get rid of them, okay? And then fourthly, your vocation, work, job career profession okay do you hate getting out of bed every monday morning and going to that job you hate that makes you miserable or like myself uh do you jump out of bed before the sun's even up because you're so excited to get into that which it is that you do for a living that you love so therefore it feels like you never work a day in your life we have choices people we have choices and if you're stuck in a rut, you don't have to stay there. Make the choice to get out of that rut and go down a different path. So that's for my buddy Travis Daigle. His YouTube channel is Fighting Past 40. I'm going to put the video where he discusses that stuff at the end of this video. Go listen to him talk about it because he's way more, motivational than, way more motivational than me. All right. Story time. It's why you're here. Okay, the first one comes to us from Fiona in Scotland, who has given me permission to use her name. Remember, if you have a story, but you know, let's say you're one of these educated professional types that works in a bank, uh, you're a stockbroker, or you're a doctor, a dentist, or a teacher, y you can't always let folks know that you're telling these stories or making these claims. I get that too. It's not always about the vertically challenged individuals in the comment section who are living under the bridge or mommy's basement. Um, it's, a, it's perfectly okay to, to submit your story anonymously, but Fiona said we could use her name. She's from Scotland. Hi, Kevin. I've been watching your hilarious videos since you began on YouTube. I tried to subscribe, but it simply won't let me. 
I'm not very computer savvy. Proof right there. It's not always me. I mean, sometimes, listen, they can, well, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Read between those lines. Okay. I live in Scotland and got married on Halloween in a haunted castle, which I think was fate as in the year 2003, me and my husband decided on the venue as it was steeped in history and could take all of our guests. Wouldn't that be awesome? You know, we have a set of friends. A couple of our best friends got married on Halloween a couple years ago. Uh, dude asked me to be the best man. I was like, heck yeah. How awesome would that be? Um, not really best man, so to say, as much as like a witness. You know what I'm saying? It was during COVID. They were, were not allowed to have too many people, but he asked me to be there. Um, I then found out we could only have this castle for our wedding on Halloween. I booked it thinking that's great. The veil is thin and all our relatives were dead, unfortunately. Uh, so they would be able to attend, so to speak. As they gave us the guided tour of the castle, one room was called the Chinese room, hence the very ornate decorations. I took one step in and couldn't go any further. Such a feeling of dread came over me. It turned out centuries ago, uh, the lord of the or the laird of the castle had been murdered by a supposedly friendly clansman who had been dining there that evening. Scots are brutal in years gone by. <laughs> so was everybody else. <sighs> the laird of the castle was taken to the room to die of his injuries, and his wife wept at his side. And by the way, and she sent this in a secondary email. She sent a picture of. Uh, and it was a website I had to sign up for and all that stuff. And I'm paranoid too, I'm not very internet savvy. So I didn't go through all that. But she said that there were orbs all over the wedding pictures that she felt were her dead relatives and her, her husband's dead relatives attending the wedding. You're probably thinking, why would you stay or even get married in such a place? But the rest of the castle was great. I'm not thinking that. I'd love to get married and stay in a place like that. I put some guests to stay in that room overnight of the wedding and lo and behold, the female of the couple said the next morning that the room was haunted. I said, yes, afraid so. She replied, I know, I sensed a feeling of foreboding, but grew up, I grew up on a haunted house, so I don't fear ghosts. She said she heard music as if a harp was playing and apparently the wife of the Laird had been playing a harp to soothe her husband until he passed. And some people since uh, have heard this to this day. She loved this experience and the history, so I didn't feel too bad about placing the couple in that room. The night before my wedding, it's customary not to see your husband, so I stayed in my marital suite with my bridesmaid. She fell asleep, and I couldn't, couldn't, uh, she says, I couldn't nerves, I suppose. I'm sorry, I don't know what you meant there. Eventually, I drifted off. Oh, I couldn't because I was too nervous, I, was suppo I suppose is what she meant. Eventually, I drifted off only to feel someone watching over me in the bed. I couldn't turn around. I was frozen with fear. I knew and sensed a small individual beside me at the bedside, probably one of the ghosts. Anyway, I'm happily married for 21 years now. Hope you can share this on your channel. I'm very spiritual and just love your channel. You make a lot of sense to me, and I do find you hilarious. Don't stop being you. It's helping so many people with all your experiences, and to be honest, the world seems mad, so you make a lot of sense what you're saying. I grew up in the 70s, I was born in the 60s, and I love the fact that we didn't have phones and IT, etc. Only three channels on TV in, in the good old days. All my best wishes to your family, they're amazing. Love the video of your son sledging. Tell him to do more video sledging in the winter. I felt I was on the sledge too. Great fun. You may use my name, I don't care. Fiona. Fiona, thank you for your story. If you didn't catch in the context, if you're an American, uh, sledging is sledding, going sleigh riding. Daniel did a bunch of those videos, him and Dearly up here last winter. Got some POV type footage. It does make you feel like you're on the sled with them. Fiona, thank you so much for submitting your story. Again, folks, if you have a story of anything that's not supposed to exist, according to the closed-minded folks who think if you believe these things or claim to experience them, you're nuts, you're cuckoos for Cocoa Puffs or whatever, send them in. If you're comfortable with us using your name, we will. Um, if not, we'll tell your story anonymously. All right, the next story comes from Ron Williams down in neighboring Tennessee. We came up through Tennessee on our uh, trip 
this summer where we went all the way as far west as to the Grand Canyon, came back through Tennessee. You look at Tennessee on the map, it looks like a small state. And I've traveled through Tennessee north to south and south to north, and you zip through it in no time. But we came in through Oklahoma and Arkansas, where my man Travis Dagel lives uh, in Arkansas. They're in Little Rock. Uh, so we came through the width of Tennessee, 20 hour plus drive. That is a very wide state. Beautiful too. Love the, the Smoky Mountains. So Ron says, and he's given us permission to use his name. Hi, Kevin. I love your channel. I'd love to share my experience with Bigfoot Sasquatch. It's like I just heard a voice. I'm up here alone, and it's only 8 o'clock in the morning my time. I've already been up for three hours. Been doing a lot of woodworking in the woodshed. Make sure to go to the Etsy store and check out our Halloween custom made, handmade by this guy decorations. And I've been editing, been editing already a couple of stories. Got a great night's sleep. I was dumb enough yesterday to go take part in a four mile trail race. It was 92 degrees and humid as can be and it was at 7 p.m. So I didn't race per se as much as I just kind of ran it for, for an exercise run. They had a cookout afterwards. Well, brought some subs, uh, all kinds of, it was a great time. My family was there with me. Uh, they're back from D.C. So I slept really, really well last night is what I'm saying because that wore me the hell out. Uh, cream crackered me as they'd say in the U.K. So I woke up perfectly rested at four and went ahead and jumped into work. So uh, here's Ron's Bigfoot Sasquatch story. I was born and raised in the woods of southeast Tennessee. My best friend and fishing buddy had just come home from two hitches in the U.S. Air Force. That summer, we spent every free minute trout fishing. One afternoon, we were sitting on the tailgate of my truck eating lunch when something came busting through the brush on the opposite side of the river. We assumed it was a bear or a wild hog, both very common in this area. Suddenly, this thing, about 10 feet tall, long, shaggy hair, almost human face, smelled like rotten flesh and excrement, stepped into the river, grabbing two very nice rainbow trout, and went back into the woods. It was probably 50 yards from us. It turned, looked at us, and just walked away. My friend will still not talk about this to this day. You're free to use my name. Thank you for what you do. Ron Williams, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Ron, thank you so much for your story. Don't doubt a word of it for a minute, okay? Moving on to a story from Jean Kramer, who's uh, given us permission to use her name. This is a creepy story, short and sweet. Then we're going to move on to an alien abduction story. One evening, my daughter and I were enjoying a long evening uh, due to her visit. The air changed as an energy force entered into my home. It traveled into my living room and stopped right in front of where I sat. This energy force. The voice of a woman with a very heavy Jamaican accent asked, Is he here? I calmly sp I'm terrible at Jamaican accents, obviously. I calmly spoke, saying, no, he is not. The energy, which was in a black cloud form with sparks bouncing around inside, began to move and went out of my home. I looked at my daughter, and she was pale, and she whispered, Mother, what was that? I said, I don't know, but I'm glad uh, the woman was not looking for us. Yeah, I bet so. Being born gifted... Uh, I was used to these kinds of things happening. This was the first occasion that another person was with me when anything like this did happen, though. Thank you for the opportunity to share. Love your show, Kevin, and you can share my name, as we did. So, uh, thank you. What an amazing story. So, see, folks, a, a lot of folks, I think, have, have come to this channel watching me and seeing things in the background. They're like, am I crazy, or is he crazy, or, or are we all crazy? Listen, there are those of us who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear that which others can't. Um, you know, I will point this out. Have you noticed there seems to be a correlation between uh, people who have faith, people who maybe are religious, and education, in that the higher one's level of education, typically the less their belief in religion or their level of faith. 
It's the same with this stuff. Paranormal, supernatural, cryptozoological, the spiritual realm. And I really believe it's because people... I, I view it as an issue, of, an issue of arrogance. They believe they're too smart to believe in such things that can't be proven through modern means. Um, inversely, I feel that you know, the more we learn and the more we come to know, the more we realize we don't know. And that is why so many folks lack education or have no desire to become educate, be educated out of, the, out of the fear that comes from that. Because you have a very narrow viewpoint and you think this is how the world works, but then once you start becoming educated, you realize, oh my God, that's not how the world works. What else is out there that I don't know about? That's scary. So you keep a closed mind. So just as folks uh, will remain uneducated because of that view and wanting to maintain that closed mind, inversely, a lot of folks who have become highly educated equally close their mind in regard to the realm of that which can't be proven through modern means. Ignorance. How does he think like that? Oh my God, I get this comment all the time. How can someone so intelligent be so crazy at the same time? Maybe they go together, brah. All right, final story, alien abduction, okay? This one's anonymous. Uh, the writer says, I've been abducted by aliens a couple of times, but I haven't talked about it enough that anyone would know. No one would believe me anyway. The first time was scarier and more disjointed. I only remember little bits and pieces. I don't feel like I was mistreated necessarily, just angry at being held down and not being in complete control of my body. They were grays, by the way. There was this weird shimmery force field, and some of the grays were wearing white hazmat suits. Aside from some really strange sounds, I don't remember a lot else. The second one was a lot more, more peaceful. I was in a bright white space with walls so smooth as to be indefinable or indefinable. Couldn't tell you how far away they were or what shape the room was. Everything was very bright and warm like a hospital. I remember the lights themselves were very warm and had a calming effect. I felt drowsy, comfortable, and unafraid. I was on a soft surface, and I think there was a quiet musical tone in the air. There were only one or two grays in the room. The one who spoke to me uh, had a female voice. If I had to describe her, I'd say she was calm, businesslike, and pleasant. She was interacting with the screen of light, like something Tony Stark would have, in order to do different scans on me, none of which hurt. They just felt odd, tingly and odd. The only thing that bothered me was that I couldn't raise myself up much or move very well. I know it was for my protection as well as theirs. The kind, beautiful female Grey I spoke to told me different things about me that I wasn't sure how she knew. Maybe the scans told her. Really wish I could remember more, but whatever they did to restrain my movements also made me dopey. I remember at the end, things got all wobbly, shimmery, and I felt very dizzy, and when I woke up in bed, I felt weird, sort of jet-lagged or hungover. I don't know. I don't drink. So that's it. I'm not lying, and it's all true. I absolutely believe you, and yes, I see that thing which was not there before. So I guess that's my sign to get on out of here, go back to the house, keep working on woodwork, Keep editing October Nights Part 2, 31 More Tales for the Halloween season, which will be out in less than 30 days. Uh, Going to go spend some time with my family. Jenny Jo brought uh, Dearly, who's not pregnant and who is not dead, and our son Daniel back down from D.C. Such a sweetheart, Jenny Jo. Go like her channel, too. She She's the one that's pregnant by one of my best friends, her husband. Um, uh, she took my family up to D.C. to stay for five days or so so I could have the time alone to edit without interruption. And now that they're back, though, they're going to go meet up with some of their other friends and spend some time at our other friends' houses for the next couple of days so I can just throw myself into the final edits, the final rewrites. It is coming. If you haven't read October Nights Part 1, we still have maybe 20 copies are left here. Uh, you can get with an autograph. autograph and it's really awesome bookmark. Uh, and again, go see my buddy Travis Daigle's channel, Fighting Past 40, to get motivated to start your day the right way and to start the very first day of the rest of your life, which is today, positive. See you for more next time. Send us your stories. 
crazylake at mail.com.